Okay, so this time we're multiplying sides by sides. And you've probably seen this multiplication law before, so we're just simply going to be applying this. So, if we have root 2 multiplied by root 5, then we simply take those numbers and we multiply them together. So that becomes the square root of 2 times 5, which is just root 10. When you move on to this one, again we just, we've got three sides, they're all multiplying together, so it becomes the square root of 3 times 11 times by 2. So 3 times 11 is 33, times 2 is root 66. And for now we're just going to leave it in this form. Here we've got root 3 times root 3. Now there's two ways of thinking about this one. You can either use your third law, so you do 3 times 3 which is 9, but then root 9 is 3. Or you could think of it as root 3 squared. So if you've got the number 3, you square root it and then square it, then you just get the number 3. Because the square root and the square root inverse functions, they cancel each other out. So if you're happy to just go straight to the 3, then that's fine. Moving on to G. Again here, similar to the last one, there's two ways of doing it. The easiest way is if you've got a root 5, 5 square root and then square, these cancel each other out. So you are just left with the number 5. And again here, a bit more difficult here, we've got root 2 to the power of 5. Now to the power of 5 just means it's multiplied by itself 5 times. So we've got root 2 times root 2, 3 times, 4 times, 5 times. But we know that root 2 multiplied by itself is just 2. And again, root 2 multiplied by itself is just 2. So we end up with 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by root 2. So you get 4 root 2. If you've reached that answer by another method of using the said law, then that's perfectly fine. Down to i. Now here, we've got 2 lots of root 5 times, if you like, that's like having a 1 lot of root 3. We don't always write that number 1 in. So we multiply the root 5, multiplies by the root 3 to give root 15. So that becomes, it's the same as 2 times root 5 times root 3. And we know that root 5 times root 3 is root 15. So that becomes 2 times root 15. And if you wish to just go straight to the answer and miss out those lines, that is okay. Moving on to J. That is the same as 2 times root 5. That is the same as 4 times root 3. So the 2 times the 4 will multiply to give the 8. And the root 5 times the root 3 will multiply to give root 15. If you wish to go straight to the answer, that is okay. You multiply the 2 and the 4 together to give the 8. And then you multiply the sides together to give the root 15. On K. We've got the 2 multiplied by the 5, which gives us the 10. And then the root 3 multiplied by root 3 is the same as root 3 squared, which is just 3. So this time we get the answer of 30. So there is no said in the answer. On L, 3 root 5 all squared. So that means that you are squaring the whole term. So it's 3 root 5 multiplied by itself. So again, two ways of doing it. You can think of it as 3 root 5 times 3 root 5. The 3 times the 3 gives the 9. Root 5 times by itself is just 5, which gives you 45. Or, when you square a product, it's the same as squaring the first term and the second term. So that's the same as squaring the 3, which gives you a 9, and squaring the root 5, which gives you a 5. And that's a slightly shorter route to get into the same answer.